Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Lords of Vala Dragonbound. This is by Riverhorse and Draco Studios. It's a one to four player game that takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour, ages 13 and up. And in the game, Lords of Vala, Valera is a continent on the verge of strife. There are dragons that come down once in a while to take these Vala tokens, which are used for fuel for the dragons to eat and also fuel for the mage's weapons. And the dragons come down and they fight against the humans. And sometimes they fight against each other. And sometimes the humans side with the dragons to fight against other humans and other dragons. And basically everybody's just trying to gain this source of Vala, going around and gathering as much as possible. And in the board game, that's the same. Basically, you're trying to score 10 points, and you'll get that for each of the different little powers that you're able to snag throughout the game. You can choose to work with a dragon and even cooperatively win with them, or you can choose to go head on with everybody. You can sometimes even be forced to work together with a dragon. And if you are the first person to get to 10 before anybody else, you win the game. We'll take a look at this miniature area control type board game with a unique little combat slash action system after I go through the full setup of the game, and then of course after that I will do my review. Let's go ahead and cover the game, Lord Zavala. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do in the game is you're going to take the main game board out and set it down within reach of all players. The next thing you're going to do is check to see how many human players you have and how many PCs you will be playing with. If it's a two-player game, you're going to play with all four factions, but two of them are going to be faceless. And how that works is on the opposite side of these player boards will be a faceless side. It'll say on the top right, faceless. So each player is going to place a player board in front of them, and you're going to have it go dragon, warrior, dragon, warrior, and it should go around the board just like that. If it's faceless, put it on the faceless side. If it's not, place it normally down. Then give each player all of their cards and tokens and their miniature. Their miniature is going to go in the different locations. You have uh, Yasvaral for Fugin, yeah, the Trade Roads is going to be for Tiberia, um, Alaria is going to be here in, the, in Alaria, and then the lower prim, prim, Primalian range will be Magnifex. Then you're going to have the player boards, give everybody their cards, and place each player's character down on the top right section of their board. You'll have this little dragon bound token, go ahead and place it somewhere on your player board for use for later. Then you're going to have your action cards. Uh, these cards are going to stay in your hand, and they're going to have little dragons on them. They're the difference between these and your Vala cards, which have this symbol and they're going to be these type of cards and you'll put them on your player board. Make sure you shuffle them, it's kind of like a small deck. If you're playing as a player, you're going to be doing all of the same thing, but you're also going to be getting a card for the location that you currently exist in. Because whenever you get a location in this game at the end of the round, check to see, you're going to get these cards. And these cards are like little locations that will give you unique bonus actions for that space. Uh, then, each of the uh, human players, not the dragon players, and not the faceless players, are going to get all of these tokens here. And you're going to put one of each of their tokens, which are considered fighters. You'll have knights, you'll have archers, and you'll have soldiers. And you'll place them down in your area, one of each type. Um, and other than that, everybody does the same thing. The dragon player, however, just doesn't get the tokens. And then, but everybody goes on the board here. Uh, for the setup is pretty simple as well of the main game board. You'll take these upgrade characters, set aside six on the board uh, adjacent within reach. You'll have an action deck that you'll put in the top left hand side of this board here. You're going to have cities, you'll have wounds, you will have dice, combat dice, which you'll set aside somewhere. And then you're going to have a neutral units as well and Vala, power slash victory points. Uh, each of the spaces that are empty on the board are going to get one Vala, which is power on the white, white side, and one of these tokens here, which is a normal neutral unit. You'll have to fight to get that Vala. Everybody else's space is going to be empty, except for the human players, which will get one of each of the three types. And then that's pretty much it. That's the full setup for the game. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to play this game, and then we'll, we'll cover what I think about it. The player who most recently saw a dragon movie, or maybe wrote a dragon, or see, saw a dragon, is the player who gets to go first. And you'll give them this first player marker here. They're going to have a hand of cards, and it's going to start like this. Use the event deck, take a card, keep it face down, and put it down within reach of all players. 
Then the player who starts the game will choose one of their cards, and they will place that card right on top. The next player who's playing the game will take a card as well and place that card on top. And you can choose any card that you'd like in your hand. And so on and so forth. If you're playing with a faceless character, they're going to do the same thing. They'll just randomly shuffle up their deck, but they're only going to be using their regular action cards. They won't use Vala cards, they're not going to gain region cards. It'll tell you exactly in the rules how they function, but for the most part, just know that they're going to put another card on the stack here. Once somebody decides they no longer wish to participate, they can choose to pass. So we'll just say that all of these guys put a card down. And now it's back to my turn. Now I could choose to keep going, and I can keep going until I have no more actions left. But I can also choose to stop. And if I stop, we'll just put this right on top there. Additionally, if I have the first marker when I choose to stop, I have to give it to somebody else. If somebody else chooses to stop before I do, then they will take the marker and now they are going to go first. So you're never going to get to go first more than once in a row, but you will get to decide if you do choose to stop again. What you're going to have after everybody has placed an action card down is a sandwich. You will have one action event card, one event card, and then in the middle will be our actions in a clockwise order until someone chose to stop. When you have this deck here, the sandwich, you have to flip it all the way over so that the first player who put a card down is going to be the first action you see after the event. So yeah, this will get revealed, discarded. This player will do his action, discard it. This player, discard it. This player this player, and then our final last action, which will then go to the discard. Now, any of the events to discard are gonna to go to a discard pile. Any of the player actions can just simply go back to the player's hand. And once that is over and everybody has used those cards, that's it. Then there's a cleanup phase in which case that each player will get their cards that they used back into their hand. You will check to see uh, each of the human players, what regions they control. And if they control additional regions to what they had previously, they are going to get location cards that they can also use while stacking cards into that pile. And then the next player who now has the token is the first player. And once again, an event card will go down and a player will play their action card. Action, 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 stop, and then proceed. And that is the entire game. Now, I'm sure what you want to know now is what do the cards do? Well. For all the dragon players, you're going to have four specific abilities that are explained on your player board, and then you'll have four, uh, up to two symbols on these cards here. There's no writing on them, it's just symbols. So this card has this symbol and this one, which is a horde and a vala. And to be brief with how they work is if you have a card with two symbols that comes up, you will do both symbols or one symbol, but it has to always be top to bottom. The dragon can do one of four things. It has Wrath, which allows them to move into a region and start combat. Soar, which allows them to move to an adjacent region or a region connected to a C location you have. Horde, which allows you to collect power tokens from a space. And if it is uncontrolled, you can have a bonus token. Or if it's controlled by a player that is your dragon bond, you can take a bonus token. And after that, you can actually, actually heal a wound as well. And if I want, I can spend a power to heal another wound. So basically it's collect power, maybe get more, heal a wound, maybe heal another wound. And the final one is Vala. You can play a Vala card as long as you have the mana to pay for it, or the Vala to pay for it. The cards have a cost on the bottom uh, left hand side, middle left hand side, and have little stars. And if you pay the cost in Vala, you can use these cards. When you collect power, you will take it with the side up, the white side up, and you'll place it on your board from left to right. If you spend it, you will flip it over to the black side. Now this means that the Vala has been spent, but it is still usable for your victory points. You will need 10 of them to win, so as long as you have 10 of these, it doesn't matter what side, it's, they're usable. But once they've been spent, you can't spend them again. And that's how you can use these Vala cards, which will be drawn into your hand via the Vala ability. It'll either A, let you draw one of these cards, or B, let you play one of them. And as long as you are playing them, you have to pay the cost for them. Over here we have Alaria, this is a human character, and she has different abilities. She can assault, where she chooses a region and moves any number of her units into from adjacent regions into that region along with her commander, and then a battle ensues. 
she can deploy. Deploy is you can place two units or up to two units in your general's region. So wherever she is is where you can place uh, your characters, your little minions or foot soldiers. Um, or you can move four units to adjacent uncontrolled or friendly regions. And when moving units from a region containing a city, you may move them to a region connected by a sea region. So only the dragon can just fly from one area to another. It's connected by sea. These guys is just like deploy is just like soar, but there's some there's some like restrictions because you have multiple units. And then you have harvest, which functions 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 the same way as horde does, basically collecting power. And then finally vala, which functions the same way as the vala does as well, where you have these cards. You'll either get to draw one of them from the top of your deck with a vala action, or you can play one as long as you have the vala that has been unspent. And that's pretty much all the actions. And the last thing you need to know about is combat. Combat's pretty simple. Dragon's combat is based on dragon's health, and dragons have a little HP bar. Uh, for the two different dragons, they have a different amount of power, but if they are full health, you will check the farthest area on the left-hand side of their health bar, and then that will be a number, and that number is their power. So in this case here, Fulgen has a four attack power uh, as long as they're full health, and whenever they're the weakest health, they will only have one. And so based on your health is how much attack dice you will be utilizing in combat. Now for the other players, um, because the other dragon works the same way but has different numbers, this player here is going to be one power for the commander. It will be one power for each of your units. And it's a bonus power if you have one of each of the three different types of units in your area. And how combat works is if I've got my dragon and I'm choosing to fight this person here, they have three, four, five power. So they're gonna get five dice and I will get four, but because I'm the attacker, I will roll. Now this is the most complicated part of the game, but okay, I've got four, I roll, and then I check crits. Any of these non-fully fully sealed in little droplets are crits, instant damage. Once instant damage is done, then that player will decide, hmm, do I want to run or do I want to fight? If they choose to fight, they'll check their power and see what they've got left, and they will roll, and they will do any crit damage to the dragon, and then all the leftover damage will be dealt at this time, and then the dragon attacker can choose to fight again. If the player chose to retreat, they'd have to retreat to an adjacent space that is either unoccupied or friendly. And if there are none of those spaces, then they can go to another location that they have. And then finally, if they don't have any locations and they're surrounded, the game ends. And you'll check to see who has the most power and that's the, that player is the winner. Uh, and that's basically how it works. Initiate combat, roll for crits. Other player chooses to leave or to fight. If they fight, they then roll for their crits, and then everybody checks all their extra bonus damage, and then you can rinse and repeat as the attacker. If you choose to retreat from combat, you will have to give one of your power to the player that you retreated from. And that's pretty much the in entire aspect of the game. There are a few little interesting things, like uh, these cards here can be gained by playing your location cards as this player here. This location card is going to give you a certain number of benefits, which are listed over here, but they will let you upgrade your units by placing them from here onto here. They will let you uh, reinforce, uh, what's that one do? That one says, if the region is neutral and controlled, place two neutral units. Oh yeah, yeah, you can place two neutral units in a region. And then the last one is you can place a city down. Cities and mountains on the game board, when you come across them, are going to negate effects. They're like, they're attacks. They're like defending structures. And you'll be able to place cities on your location when you use these location action cards. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's that, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think you get the idea of the game, and you'll just rinse and repeat until somebody has the ten power. Now let's talk about dragon bonding. When you retreat a character into an area with a dragon, or vice versa, dragon retreats into you. You can you both have to roll a die, whether you want to or not. And if they're both hits, then you're bonded, and you basically work together in all the same ways, except only one of you has to get to ten, and whoever does is the winner. However, if uh, you both do not get the role that you want. You can choose to spend Vala power up until the point where you're happy with your role. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's talk about my review. 
So Lords of Vala is a faction to area control game with combat where you're moving to different places, fighting off the small or weaker units that are the neutral clans to then hopefully suck up the power. Now being on a location doesn't mean you're going to get power and it's going to be based on being able to harvest or being able to hoard, either being by the normal character or by the dragon. And getting them onto your board is step one, getting to 10 is step two. But there's plenty of ways that can thwart you in your attempts, whether it be neutral clans, whether it be a faceless character, or whether it be simply one of the other players playing the game. And combat is what ensues. If you are weak in combat and a player comes over to you and smushes you, they'll take your power that you've worked so hard to get. And because uh, you have to use cards, uh, action cards from your hand in order to move and then fight and then harvest that uh, can be a detriment and you have to be aware of what that's going to happen now this is kind of like a programmable movement type of a game where you have an event card likely to give you some type of power on the location so that's how more power is generated in the game and then each player places the cards in the order they hope to move to and do but best laid plans, right? You might not actually get to do everything exactly how you'd like to do them because somebody else might have the exact same plans. It might be in an adjacent region next to you and thusly that can mess things up based on the order. So you have to take into account what other players are likely to do in place as well. Utilizing Vala cards is another thing in this game. These are like powerful, unique abilities that each player has, and they can do different things like moving units into adjacent, friendly, or uncontrolled regions. So it's like a bonus action that they can take if they've already taken one from the card they have, they don't have another one. Or maybe a dragon wants to heal. That's also possible with their Vala cards. There's a bunch of different little choices that they can make, and it's kind of cool that each of them function differently. Even the main dragons, Fulgin and um, this guy here, the Magnifex, have their own type of HP, which is also related to how much damage they do. If a dragon is weak, um, then they are, sorry, if they're if they weak, it's likely because they have lots of health, but the strong ones have very little health. So when you drain a dragon to nothing, they have to retreat and their next action has to be to heal. And no matter what that sigil is, which are the little symbols that are like your actions, is going to be making them heal. And that is why you'll never actually be able to defeat a dragon. You'll never kill any of the characters. There's no elimination in this game. All you're gonna be doing is simply pushing them away and taking their power. And with the characters, it's the same way as well. You'll be pushing them away, but they don't have any additional health. They're just gonna move once they've lost all their units and they take a damage and they're gonna give power as well. But they can lose their units as well as their cities and all that kind of stuff. There's ways that those things can blow up in the game. Um, but they, they play very similarly, even though there's like, there are like two different types of factions that has that kind of like little bit of a root feel where the dragons function a little differently than the main characters, but they're still pretty similar. Like the actions are fairly similar and what they do is fairly similar. It's just one of them utilizes neutral tokens uh, or, or character tokens, I suppose, as damage. Uh, and health, whereas the dragon just has their own unique health board. The other cool thing I guess about characters is that you can utilize these cards here. As long as you meet the requirements, meaning that you own their specific homeland uh, and you have a space available, you place these guys down and you'll get to do whatever they say. Some of them will say, when this guy is wounded during a combat, roll a die and apply any hits to the enemy. So he has kind of like a counter attack. And you can upgrade all your units of the specific type to do this ability, and that's the horseman. So whenever you drop out a bunch of those guys, that will help. Or maybe it's a swordsman that says, as long as there are only swordsmen here, dragons cannot fight in here. And so it protects certain areas from certain types of players based on what locations you have and if you have them on your board from the upgrades. I really like combat in this game. Combat's really cool. It's very, very balanced. I feel like whenever I've engaged in combat, other than when you're fighting little baby neutral units to take control of an area, you have a good chance of, um, of a feeling like you can win no matter which side you're on. And even so, you also have that crit aspect. It's the combat's a little the most wonky thing, but also probably my favorite thing because you roll, you crit, then they check to see if they want to run or not. And if they don't, maybe they'll fight you because you made a terrible roll, or maybe you made a great roll and force them to move back. And then you've successfully dealt combat damage. And it kind of promotes combat because crits are so important in the game. And even if you have a force that's to be reckoned with next to you, and you only have three dice where they have six or seven or eight, because these guys that aren't dragons can have that many. Um, if that happens, you can at least crit four times and wipe out half their board. And then they're like, maybe I don't want to attack. Or maybe 
if you don't crit, but you have a ton of regular damage, like, I don't know, six or eight or whatever, they might say, I could defend, I'm not taking any instant crit damage with five dice, but I'm gonna lose all my forces and retreat either way, so I might as well do so and not lose my forces. And there are these little unique individual principles that kind of change the mind of the players. Dragon bonding. Dragon bonding is a double-edged sword in this game. Sometimes you will want to, sometimes you won't. Um, I won't, I'll get into the faceless characters kind of at the end here, but when you're playing with other players and you dragon bond, it's probably because you think that one of them can be useful to your end goal, whether it be they're close to winning the game or they have a strong position but very little, uh, very little vola, and so they can protect you while you grab and covet the last little pieces of power. Because once somebody fills their board and they're working together on a team, they can successfully win. Speaking of that, also Dragon Bonding will give you a card. You'll flip over this card on your board and it will count towards the game. It will say you can heal a wound whenever you move into the same or adjacent region as a bonded general. So if I bond with purple here and I walk into their room, their location, I get to instantly heal a wound, which is nice. It saves me from half of an action, basically. And so each of the characters has a Dragon Bonded ability, which works and feels fine. It's good, solid. I love the upgrades, I love the combat, I love how the player boards are really easy to understand, all the actions are fairly simple. Uh, there are certain things in the game that are just kind of wonky when it comes to the rules. Um, specifically, the thing that kind of drove me the most nuts is the faceless. Faces are basically characters, and you'll play with them whether you like them or not, because you need to have the four different characters in the game. You can still bond with them, even on accident, and if you get unlucky, you might be stuck with them because they suck. Uh, they're not, they're prone to like expanding and whatnot, but they're not super, super aggressive. There are some times when they can be, but it's all based on these kind of like wonky principles. And it's very likely that you'll want to eat them up as a dragon. So pairing with those faceless, you probably won't want to do because they don't get certain bonuses. They won't get the three, the three character bonuses that are presented to them on the board. Um, they're not going to go where you want them to go. And there's certain things like in the rules that says you, when you're dragon bonded with a faceless character, you can make decisions for them. I don't know what that means. Does that mean I get to make the decisions based on the random cards that are placed in the stack? Or does that mean I can choose the cards placed in the stack as I would will with them? I'm not super sure. Uh, it, it's not super clear. Some of the rules uh, have little like, okay, where do I have to do with this? It's not here, I have to go over here, which is just, it, it could be better copy edited is what I'm saying. But the rules overall are easy to read and easy to understand. It's just placement for certain things are like a little wonky. And I hate the faceless characters. I don't like them at all. I don't like working with them. Uh, I don't mind working against them, I suppose. They're a very good neutral automata, but the problem is when you have a three-player game and one player is the faceless and you have two people that bond to each other that are regular players, and then there's just little old you left in the corner stuck with having to decide if you want to deal with them um, and how you want to deal with them, it doesn't feel as great. This play is great with four players. It's the best type of a game to play four players with. If you don't have four, I probably wouldn't be as interested in playing it because I want to play the game with all the real human players and the choices to bond. When you bond, you bond forever. So it kind of makes the game into a 2v2 as soon as people decide to bond, which could be at the very beginning or at the very end, or they could bond never, which is kind of a nice twist. It kind of reminds me of the that other game, Rising Sun. Just not the game itself, but just the alliance aspect. And I only like playing that game with equal number of players so that each person has the same equal opportunity to work with another player in the same way. And when you have three players in this game, it just doesn't do that. You're stuck with a faceless character that somebody's gonna have to be paired up with or just working by themselves against two other players. And it's not for me. Uh, but overall, it's a really cool area control game. If you can get past little wonky rules here and there and you don't mind the faceless characters and you have a good chunk of players, four players to play the game with, then this is gonna be a lot of fun. How the combat works, your upgrades, playing your different characters, having them feel just a little different but all very similar at the same time. And just the idea of the events changing things up, maybe forcing a bond to happen in between the game states, is a really cool aspect. I love the art, it just really works for me. I think this is based off of an IP, if I'm correct. 
um, but it makes me interested in taking a look at it because I love dragons. And yeah, overall, the game has a great board presence. And I sat down when we were playing, came, some people came over and were like, that game looks really cool. I'm interested and they watched the game play. So there you go as far as that goes. Lord of Vala Dragon Bond is a solid game if you're interested in a four player game or if you do not mind the faceless aspect. But if you're you know on the fence, you should read about it and then decide for yourself. But overall, solid choice. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Lords of Vala Dragonbound. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can purchase the game. You can also go ahead and head over to our website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaway, Kickstarter list, and more. There are other reviews there on the site that are not based on our videos here on YouTube slash other places that I have this uploaded. And they're written and they have different types of games. So if you like that type of content more, you can go ahead and check out that stuff as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. There's a weekend Sunday night live stream where we stream games just like this one and Wednesdays on whatnot. Thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to dealing with you out in Vala. <laughs> dealing with your Vala next time. Your Vala? Dealing with fighting for power? Destroying you all with my dragon next time. <laughs>